I'm Charlie from CookingSecretsForMen.com and we are continuing our series Cooking with Milwaukee Community Leaders and I'm very pleased to have as my guest today Brian Goddard. Um, Brian is currently at the Mac Fund you can see from his, his sweatshirt um, and we'll, we'll get to the Mac Fund in, in a minute talk extensively about that um, but I want to talk a little bit about your, your upbringing. So you were born in Green Bay, yes sir and moved around Wisconsin, you moved to Fond du Lac and Oshkosh, mm -hmm. among other places. Um, so other than your professed love for the Green Bay Packers, <laughs> uh, um, talk about your formative years until you, you, you went away to college. Uh, growing up in this state, greatest state around, uh, great people. I always knew I was going to come back after I left, but uh, Packer fan my whole life. I think if you're born in Green Bay, you're born with the green and gold blood in you. Right. Uh, growing up in the Fox Valley, my dad would bring me down to Milwaukee all the time. We'd go to Brewer games at County Stadium, go to the Bucks games at the Mecca. Those are the years, those 80s and early 90s when the Bucks were really good, but could never just get to that right. final hurdle. Uh, so right. I'm a diehard Wisconsin sports fan. And my dad's job, my dad worked for Mercury Marine mm -hmm. in Fond du Lac, but they also had a plant in Oshkosh. Uh, they moved a whole bunch of families to the state of Oklahoma before my senior year in high school. So that's where I ended up graduating high school in Stillwater, Oklahoma, where Oklahoma State is. And it was probably the best thing. A lot of people would say you moved your senior year. Uh, I was a quiet, shy kid, believe it or not, Charlie. I was very quiet. Um, but it was the best thing because I've always loved weather. I've loved aviation. I you know, volunteered at the EAA as a kid. I was going to be a pilot. That's why I started out to be really? and got my pilot's license, did all this stuff. Then I started realizing, you know what? Maybe I don't want to. At that time, you needed thousands of hours to right. become a commercial pilot. And I was just like, oh, I don't know. My other love was weather. I have always known I loved weather and went to the University of Oklahoma. Uh, probably the number one severe weather school in the world. There's right. more meteorologists in Oklahoma City than anywhere else in the world because of their weather. Sure. And the first time I had an Oklahoma thunderstorm, I was like, boy, I thought I knew thunderstorms. And then I go to Oklahoma and they have thunderstorms. Yeah. Went, uh, that's I was going to ask you, how did you get to Oklahoma? Had you picked that college? You picked that college because that's where you lived. But once I got to Oklahoma, I knew that I needed to storm chase and study storms down there. Well, you, you got your degree. I did. At uh, your bachelor's in geosciences. Um, and then you worked for a TV station in Oklahoma mm -hmm. while you were finishing your degree. I was. And then you got to move around after graduating, went, moved to Florida, uh, Minnesota, and gigs in Wisconsin. Um, so you were 20 something at the time, I assume. Yep. So my question is as a 20 something, were you more, um, were you happy moving around and going seeing different places? and Or were you kind of thinking, well, maybe I want to settle down and, and be somewhere, but mostly just as a 20-something. First couple of jobs moving around, just that's what you have to do in this business. Right. Uh, as we have interns, some of them don't want to leave. They, they were raised here, they went to school here, they want to stay here. And I'm like, you're, you're missing out, especially as a meteorologist. You get to experience weather from around the country. Uh, and so my, I had a job in Oklahoma when I was still in college, driving two hours each way at midnight to do the morning show drive back, go to school for the rest Yikes. of the day. I did that for six months. Then I moved to Wausau, uh, back home. I was so excited. My grandparents lived in Wisconsin Rapids so they could watch me. I mean, what, they were like my best friends. It was great that they could watch me every day. I was there in 96 when the Packers won the Super Bowl. So what, uh -huh. what a great time to come back to this sure. state. Uh, then I went to Jacksonville, Florida, where I met my wife. She was born and raised in Jacksonville. And I spent five wonderful years there. And I thought at that time, I was you know in my mid-twenties, I thought this might be a place I could live. It was, uh -huh. it was hot. <laughs> I, a Wisconsin kid, it, 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 people are like, you moved from Florida? And I'm like, when do you go to Florida? March, April, when it's beautiful. Go there the other, you know, nine, right. ten months out of the year, it's hot. Uh, I regret that now. <laughs> As I'm older now, I regret it. But I moved my wife. A year after we got married, mm -hmm. I moved her from Jacksonville. She lived at the beach. She, born and raised there, uh, moved her to Minneapolis. So. Now, you're not one to brag, so I'll do a little bragging for you. So, Brian has three Emmys. Five? Dr. Chris bragged. Oops. <laughs> Brian has five <laughs> Emmys. <laughs> Who's counting anymore? So, Brian has five Emmys, and you also had a um, stint mm -hmm. um, as a fill-in weatherman, a uh, meteorologist, on the national CBS early show. I did. 
Um, so did those successes, being on national and, and Emmys and that type of thing, did that um, want you to pursue other national gigs, or were you kind of thinking, yeah, I really want to find some place where I can settle down? And I, I was extremely honored when they asked me to fill in because when I worked in Minneapolis for five years, uh, we were owned by CBS, mm -hmm. and so. They saw me. The, the corporate guys saw my my work in Minneapolis, and when the main person was on vacation, they would have me fly out there and fill in. What an honor! I yeah. was, but once I saw it, they get paid a lot of money. But the weathermen, meteorologists, get paid I mean, a ton of money, but they're talking for thirty seconds. Right. Hot in the south, rainy in the west, cold in the north. Back to you. That's I'm a true scientist. Like a lot of those folks aren't, they are becoming more meteorologists nowadays, but back in the day they weren't. They were just right. personalities. I'm a weather nerd. And so I thought I was in Minneapolis for the rest of my life. And then TMJ4 called me out of the blue on my daughter's first birthday. My daughter's now a senior. It's warmer than Minneapolis, so my wife's happy about that. She's still with me. Can you believe that? I moved her up north. She's still with me. <laughs> um, so you, that brings me to um, TMJ4. As you moved here mm -hmm. in Milwaukee in 2006. And you stayed at TMJ4 uh, until end of 2022, somewhere in 2022. Mm -hmm. um, so you were in my living room every night. I appreciate that. My mother loved Lester Holt, loved Lester Holt. So we watched the NBC evening news, mm -hmm. and then the local news would follow. And so, you know, we were watching you know, Charles Benson, and you were more times than not the, the guy on the evening weather. But your segments were always, you know, was pretty good, but I think you enjoyed and had the most fun out in the community mm -hmm. when you were at picnics, when you're at the uh, festivals, mm -hmm. when you're at um, you know ball parks, and just you know, out talking to people because it's it's to an extent unscripted because there's people walking up just hey Brian how you doing and you go hey how you doing um, you know so that but that is your personality and I think you enjoyed that a whole lot. So talk a little bit about your years at at TMJ four. 16 glorious years there they brought me home I will be forever indebted to them for bringing me home uh, and I do I weather is the only part of the news by the way that's not scripted did you know that yes the whole part of it is the three minutes is ad lib so everybody's like how do you do that and it's just like well you make the graphics you put them in order that you want you talk and then they tell you and you're here to wrap it up uh, but when you're out in public I started doing that when I was in Jacksonville and then even more so in Minneapolis at the state fairs and stuff. Mm -hmm. I found my niche. The shy kid that I was telling you about all of a sudden was having fun out in public with people. Can you believe that? It's, it's crazy. How, my parents to this day, how is my shy kid out there doing this? And it was great. And Channel 4 embraced it and they wanted me to go out more and more. Yeah. And not be in, you have to be in studio for bad weather days. You sure. have to. It's, it's the same. Right. Those are the days you're really earning your money. It's the 70 and sunny days that you're out there having fun. They like to send you out there when it's 10 below. I'm like, no, let me stay inside. <laughs> I don't miss that. That is the one thing now, When last winter, my first winter not doing weather, I'm sitting there watching the snowstorm on my couch in front of my fireplace. I'm like, this is great. But what a great 16 years I had at Channel 4. It was tough to tell them I was hanging it up, but I just turned 50 years old and did make a career change. Uh, it was time. I had do it. I've been doing this for 26 years, mm -hmm. been around the country, met a lot of great people, so much fun. And it's an honor for them to say, you were, like you just did, you were in my living room every night. That is an honor and a privilege. Wow. The, the weather usually, you know, for the most start was, was pretty close to what was happening. <laughs> uh, some, not, I'm not always wrong, but there are times, yes, predicting the future. <laughs> right. Um, so uh, let's get into the Mac fun. So you left TMJ4 to go to the MAC Fund. The MAC Fund is Milwaukee Athletes Against Childhood or Children's Cancer. Yep. Uh, it was founded by um, John McLaughlin, who was a Milwaukee Buck. Mm -hmm. And I, I found this interesting that it was founded um, the day he retired mm -hmm. from the NBA at halftime at a game, I'm assuming it had to be at the Mecca at that point. Mm -hmm. Was. Um, he was on the championship team in 71 and, and started, so this has been around for 50 plus years. Not quite, almost 50. Okay. Oh, that's right, 76. So it'll be, we're coming up on 50 years. Coming up it's a big years. celebration. So um, talk about the great work that the MAC Fund does 
around here. And what's your what's your title? I know you're... I'm a major gifts officer, okay. so that's something they've never really had before, and I'll explain that here in a second. Uh, but the Mac Fund, Eddie Doucette, the great announcer for the Bucks, right. his son came down with cancer, oh. and that's what started this. Oh, I didn't know that. So he was the first surviving. They they brag about this, and they should first surviving patient at the Mac Fund head. Um, and so then Johnny Mac and Eddie. Uh, built this up over the years, 47 years now, over $80 million have been raised in this area. And once again, I go back to, and Johnny Max says this, it couldn't happen in any other city. The people of this city and this area are so giving. It's, it, we needed this because only 4% of all the uh, budget for research, cancer research, right. only 4% goes to pediatric cancer. Right. So the researchers need more money, and this is what the MAC Fund provides. Every dollar that goes or gets donated is going to researchers at Children's, uh, Freighter Medical College, UW Carbone in Madison, and Marshfield Clinic. So the money's staying local, but the research is global. So what's happening in this state and at Children's and at Freighter and Medical College is, ha is helping children and families everywhere. And I got into this, and people say you had to get involved with something because of television. TV doesn't tell you you have to do anything. Right. This is something I wanted to do. And my first month working here, they asked if I wanted to MC the Bucks Mac Fun game at the Bradley Center. And I said, I'd be honored. And that's what started it. My wife and I went up to the suite after I did my halftime stuff. And we met families that lost children. We met families with their children that survived. And we left. My daughter was one. We left with goosebumps saying, these people are incredible. We have to do more. And we just kept doing that. And do, so I kept getting, I kept asking to get more involved. I want to do another event. I want to do this. I started my own event, which is coming up next weekend. I have a bowling event in Cedarburg. Oh. This will be our 11th year. We've raised almost 400 grand in a tiny little bowling alley in Cedarburg, Wisconsin. Nice. It's amazing. And so over the years, I just kept telling John McLaughlin I want to do more. And he was like, really? I said, yes. So then he put me on the board, which I was honored. Then he asked me to be the chairman of the board. Which I was like, why me? And this is Johnny Mac and our, our relationship. He's like, there's no one else. <laughs> That's just how we are. We just, my parents are like, you talk to Johnny Mac? I go, yes, I talk to Johnny Mac. Um, and I kept telling him, I even told him this, I don't want to be the chairman of the board if it means I can't be on staff someday. I've been telling him this for years. I right. want to work for the Mac. And he's like, why would you leave TV? I go, because I've done it and I believe in what you're doing and I want to help. And it finally just worked out that my contract was coming up at a time where they were looking for this position. It's things things out. work out, and I'm, it's been six months, and it's better than I ever imagined. So uh, I'm going to put the um, the website in our description box, and also have it on the crawl down here. Um, it's www.macc.org. M-A-C-C-F-U-N-D. MacFund. Uh, I'll have all that. We'll edit all this. No, but, no, we're good here. <laughs> but like you were mentioning about 50 years. Yeah. So my goal, the, the team's goal, uh, is to celebrate those 50 years by raising $50 million. So it'll be in the next four and a half years. So they've done $80 million in 47. We're going to do 50 in less than five just so, to celebrate. So if you want to get involved, we'll have a way for you to donate or at least inquire um, as to the great work that happens at the Mac Fund. So, um, so you... Uh, you Talk a little bit about your family. So tell us, you know, about your family okay. and where they are nowadays. Uh, my wife and I have been married twenty, almost twenty-three years. Mm -hmm. Our name's Tina. Uh, I said born and raised in Florida. Brought her up here, and we still have to go to Florida a couple of times a year. It's and we'll we'll more than end up retiring down there once our kids are gone because I brought her away for so long. Uh, but my daughter, who was one when we moved here, Allie, which so many people know, uh, is now a senior mm -hmm. in high school. Uh, graduating in a month, which I wow. just can't believe. Uh, still deciding where she wants to go. She's had all different kinds of ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, my son, Austin, is now 12 and in sixth grade. My parents, who lived up here for most of their life, are now in Fort Myers, lost their home in the hurricane. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah, so I was just down there uh, three weeks ago, helping mm -hmm. them now move into their new home. But it was a stressful time last year. So yeah. my last day of work was covering the hurricane here. And knowing that the, t the town that my parents live in, that I've been going to since I was a kid, that's where my grandparents went, was going to be destroyed. And then the morning, so I got done at work at TNJ4 my last night at 11 o'clock, 3 a.m. the next day, my dad and I started driving to Fort Myers to salvage what we could. That, that was my first day of retirement. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And so when we drove up to their house, they had put so much into it over the years, hurricane proofing it and stuff, their house looked unscathed. Really? They were the only house in their block with a roof because they 
upgraded the roof right. and strapped it down and stuff. Uh, it was this five to six feet of water that came into the neighborhood that just took everything. So yeah. we went down there to save certain things. My dad's like, why are we saving all these pictures on the wall? I go, because mom, these are mom's pictures. Right. And now was two weeks ago when we moved into their new house, she was like, thank you for saving these. It's the little things that you go. And, and that's when, when all you have are pictures right. and some, some pots and pans that were up above. That's all we had. We're going to go to the fun stuff. So we call this segment Serious People with Serious Jobs. Kind of serious. Serious? People. Kind of serious people <laughs> with serious jobs having a little fun. Most of the people are serious people with serious jobs. Um, but you do have a serious job, but we do want to have a little fun. Um, so when we talked earlier this week, um, you had mentioned you saw the mayors, the interview mm -hmm. with the mayor, and how we, uh, you know, per uh, we prepared copycat McDonald's breakfast sandwiches. And you also mentioned you said you're not a cook. Uh, we'll see I, I grill. We'll see about that. Yeah. Um, and dangerous. <laughs> so what I think we arrived at um, is that we're going to make some sausage gravy and biscuits. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to make uh, fried green tomatoes, but I cannot find green tomatoes anywhere in Wisconsin in April. So um, <laughs> probably <laughs> was a fruitless venture to start with. So uh, I pivoted and said, well, let's make scrambled eggs. I'm I'm happy with All right. that. Um, so give us a, ch a minute to set up. We're going to go over to the, uh, the cooking area. We'll, uh, we'll get ready to make some How's sausage, your, gravy, and biscuits. How's your insurance in this place? Uh, well, that was the manager that just walked by. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be able to evacuate. Call the fire uh, department. Here we go. I think we'll be okay. All right, so give us a chance to set up, and we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, so as I usually do, I forget to give our guest... An apron. So you can see Brian is nicely dressed, and so we want to uh, give you an apron to put on so you don't get your Mac Fund oh, uh, shirt you. all full of grease and stuff. Oh, look um, at this. You know, because if you're going to some event somewhere, you don't want to be splattered. So I'm wearing this to the event. That's what I'm doing. There you go. We we'll, we'll love to hear. All right, so um, we're making sausage, biscuits, and gravy. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the biscuits right, in. The biscuits, yes. So the biscuits are here. We've got... Um, 375 degree oven. We want it to be nice and brown. So don't do what I do. Don't forget the biscuits because they'll come out like. Well, we have. Rock. A, we're using our auxiliary timer. Oh, cool! Alexa, set a timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, starting now. There we go. Thank you, Thank you Alexa. All right, so we are going to add. That we're using turkey sausage, and that's just going to go right in. Let's turn this up a little bit. Look at all the sausage. You're spoiling me with all this sausage. Well, we, we kind of feed the, the people that work here because oh. they allow us to come and use the building. So Brian is doing the sausage, and we're going to get this nice and brown. And I'm going to turn on the very low, the heat for the scrambled eggs that we're going to make. So we have low heat, medium heat for the sausage. We yeah. don't want to burn it too much, right? We're on medium. Okay. And the sausage will brown pretty quickly. And it doesn't give off a lot of grease because turkey is, doesn't have that much fat mm -hmm. in it. But we want to make sure we keep all the fat, all the grease in there. So when we add the flour and we add the milk, there's something that it holds on to. Okay. So that's what we're doing. All right. So I'm going to start my part of the beating the eggs. Get them organized. So Brian, you do no cooking, some cooking, a little some, cooking. Some. My wife loves to cook. So, uh -huh. it's, so it's, it's fun watching her. Like I, I told you, like she'll she makes some of the greatest dishes, and then she'll like improvise. Uh -huh. And then she's like, "This was the best meal yet." Like, oh, what'd you put in there? And she was like, "Oh, I don't remember. I just threw this in there and that in there." Right. It's like I like to follow directions. I, I love to grill, uh -huh. but I can make you know scrambled eggs for the kids in the morning. I can make toast. <laughs> See now that I can do. That's I anyway. learned that at skill. Yeah, you cannot tell the difference, as far as I'm concerned, between regular sausage and turkey sausage. It's I agree. Just, it's just less greasy. Right. When you put in the liquids, that it'll it'll become sticky. Now, did you stay up all night making the flour? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> my, uh, my mill. Your mill? I was out, yes. On the back 40. <laughs> Getting the wheat. Whoa. Oh, see, I made it. I just threw some sausage back there. I am making a mess. Yeah, there's... That? Oh, it's got tongs. Look at this. See, I told you. I hope you have good insurance here. Ah, we're good. All right, so we're looking like 
a little more, let's get a little more pink out of that, and then we'll move forward with the, uh, the flour. This is a very simple recipe, very few ingredients, and it's just one of those that you just, you work through the, um, you told me to be simple. We don't ask her or she'll answer. Because <laughs> you could say, Alexa, how much time on the timer? You have 10 minutes left on your 15 minute timer. Oh, man. Alexa, thank you. You're so welcome. Your kindness really gives me a charge. Happy Saturday. Thank you. No, we're not sharing. <laughs> she's, she said, yeah, I'm sorry. We're not sharing. I'm sorry, ma'am, you get no sausage gravy. Well, now let's see what come, comeback she has. Well, you, you'd think, but she's listening right now and saying, hmm, Charlie and Ryan are not sharing. This is not nice. We're looking good there. You want to add the flour? Yeah, just kind of sprinkle it around. And, and then most people would empty the grease, but you said no. We do not empty the grease, right? Okay, we do not empty the grease. Slowly add the flour, or just dump her in there. Slowly, and just kind of go around. Okay. Um, so you need the grease to bring the gravy together. Okay. And one of the things that they counsel is don't use butter. Um, that's why I put a little oil in at the beginning. So we're just going to stir that. Up. So one of the things we're going to use, excuse me, is we're going to put some soy sauce in. And you're saying oh. soy sauce in breakfast? Well, there's a reason for that. There's two things that soy sauce does. Um, the first thing it does is it adds some color to very white gravy. And the second thing it does, it adds some sodium and some flavor. I was just going to say salt. Yeah, exactly. Salt. <laughs> we do that for Thanksgiving all the time. So instead of having white gravy come out of the, the turkey, we have, um, it has a little color. Okay. And it, it has a lot more flavor to it. Oh, that's looking really good. So look at that. Secrets from Charlie. I, would, I learned something today about soy sauce. Right. That is a cooking secret for men. All right, so now the next thing we do is going to pour in the, the milk little by little and just kind of stir it around. Actually, I can help you. Um, and stir it around. So just little by little. And we get it to incorporate with the flour. This is so much better than just opening up a can of gravy. Yes. <laughs> I would say that's, that's an accurate statement. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to do this in my house, and they're going to be like, what in the world happened to you? I'm like, don't you worry. Don't you worry about it. Charlie taught me, if you hear that a house burned down in Cedarburg. <laughs> That's what happens. So. It'll be on TMJ. It will. It'll be like, uh, you tried to cook, and look what happened. Stick to weather and fundraising. Charlie, what about you? You, you, you ask me all the questions. Uh-huh. Besides loving to cook, what do you do? Well, I'm retired from, I was a recruiter for many years. Okay. And I do do a lot of cooking and YouTubing. And Did you so. do cooking back in the day when you were busy working or just I, something Yeah, new? I was, my wife has a very high-powered job. So I am, um, I was the cook for my boys in school. Good for you. Um, I grew up in restaurants and, and country clubs. You know, kind of second nature, but, you know, there, as it says here on your apron, I love to cook, I mean, I love to eat. Therefore, I cook. So but uh, do your boys then know how to cook? They're both very good cooks, yes. Good. Very comfortable in the kitchen. Good for you. Um, experimental. Uh, you know, they try different things. They're, they both eat very healthily, if that's a word. All right. So I think we're going to start on the... Has anybody asked you questions before? I mean, I feel like you ask all the questions. People need to get to know Charlie better, too. Nah, nobody wants to know me. Don't you dare edit this out, either. <laughs> A little more butter there. And then we're gonna see if we can give it a little color. Some places are very stingy on the uh, sausage, man. You, this is gonna be. Yeah, we're not stingy. No. All right, Alexa, how much time on the timer? You have five minutes and 50 seconds left on your 15 minute timer. All right, this will work well. All right, so Brian's. So we're gonna let the gravy come to a boil and. Um, let it go for about two minutes, which will probably be about the same time as the eggs being. Biscuits are starting to get a little brown, which is good. Do you do this every Saturday? These shows, yes. Not biscuits and gravy. No, but this show every Saturday? Yeah. So I should just mark this on my calendar and I should just talk about whatever and make stuff every Saturday? That'd probably get boring for your <laughs> viewers, but um, we can entertain. That I, To me, it's more talking to the people who are trying to make a change in our community. Trying to affect change. There's a lot of good people, aren't there? Absolutely. There's so many good people out there. Put a little flavor on that. You like garlic? 
I'm Italian. My wife goes through more garlic. She loves garlic. Well, there's a saying in our family that there's no such thing as too much garlic. <laughs> but there's also no such thing as too much butter or too much chocolate, so they all kind of go. Can I, be, can I be part of your family? <laughs> this is a really good family. <laughs> all right, so we're going to turn off the... The eggs are done. Gravy's boiling. Look at that. This is bubbling up. It smells good. I'm trying to get a little thicker, and then I think we're, we'll be good to go. All right. So um, we're just about finished here. We're going to put everything together, and then we're going to sit down and enjoy our sausage gravy, biscuits, which are in the oven, and some scrambled eggs, and we'll be right back. I wanted to show you that the biscuits came out, um, so we're going to put these, slice them in half, put together our gravy on top, and our scrambled eggs, and we'll be right back. We didn't burn them. We did not burn them. <laughs> All right, so we're back, and I'm starving. So, um, Brian, tell us what we made here. Uh, we made turkey sausage gravy. Mm -hmm. Your biscuits are phenomenal. I mean, they're golden brown, not burnt at all. And your scrambled eggs look just delectable. And then, of course, you added the green on top. That's right. Little green for little green. I have noticed, though, that the white gravy does have that little bit of color from the soy sauce. All right, we put a little soy sauce on the gravy. I can't so, speak, my mouth is watering. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and, and taste what we, what we prepared. Nothing like watching people eat, right? Hmm. Look at this. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I've had a lot of gravy. That is some good gravy. Wow. I'm just gonna keep eating it out here. <laughs> What do you think? It's delicious. I mean, the sausage itself oh. is great. It has great, great flavor. And as we pointed out, you can't tell the difference between turkey yeah. sausage and... And like I said, you get a lot of gravy on at places with a little bit of sausage in there. This is basically sausage with some gravy on top. This is... Works for me. Hmm. What are we doing for lunch, Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> How about that waffle and egg, man? Mm, brunch. We just go right upstairs and grab something. Um, mm. well, thank you for having me on. This has well, been awesome. Thank you. I mean, I, I think I told you this when you when you first called. Now, I I talked to yeah everybody in town. I have the mayor on. I've got uh, you know, the captains of industry, you know, big shots all over town. Weatherman, <laughs> how exciting! All these big people, no. ex retired weatherman. And man. when you called me back. All I could say was, I, 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 I couldn't talk. I was so shocked that not only did you call back, um, but you're someone that I have, you know, I've just, like I said, I've seen you in my living room for years and years and years. So I was just, it was just one of those things that uh, it was kind of overwhelming to have you. And then you're here and, and we're having a good time. Thank but, you. Yeah, I mean, I, I love shining a light on people who are trying to, affect change in our community. And that's what we do here. That's what our um, program, Cooking with Milwaukee Community Leaders, is about. Um, people know what the MAC, that the MAC Fund exists. It's nice to have a little more definition to it of things that we do. Mm -hmm. And we will also have a link for if you want to get involved, how you do that. Um, so I think we're going to thank Brian for coming out. I really thank you. Because we want to make sure we can you know, finish this little pile of, um, this little something for breakfast. Just sitting here talking to smell, I'm like, dude, let's go. <laughs> so, thanks everybody. Appreciate you watching our series Cooking with Milwaukee Community Leaders. Thanks so much. Thank and you. thanks everybody for watching. Appreciate it. Um, uh, if you have a chance, check out the MAC Fund. Please, every dollar helps. If it's just a dollar, every dollar helps. So if you can go to the MacFund.org, it'd be so, so grateful and thanks to everybody for supporting us. All right. I hate to rush you, but I'm hungry, so <laughs> thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. All right. I say I'm, I'm good at two things. I'm good at eating and I'm good at bloopers. Brian has three Emmys. Five? Dr. Okay. Sprague. Oops. <laughs> Brian has five <laughs> Emmys. <laughs> Who's counting anymore? I was going to ask, as give or t I, didn't, I, was, I thought you, okay, he's got five and this is where we can edit. Um, no, it's good. good.